Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I wanted to go over a fresh batch of characters that I have observed either on my team or on the opponent's team that are very good for Alliance Conquest. This is the same type of video that we did about a month ago on the underdogs, but I thought I would bring you some new characters and I would shed some light on some really strong, even tier one characters that you can put into your roster if you wanna be more consistent in Alliance Conquest and characters that you can look out for if you're building defense teams or if you're attacking a region so that you don't get trapped into facing them and potentially losing your your good characters so instead of doing what we did in the last video where we described the three things that makes any Alliance conquest character good just to recap guys it's passive effects like healing immunity debuff crowd control effects like fear stun snare and then flexible rotations the characters that don't rely on one particular skill to do all of the work instead of doing that I wanted to split this group up into characters that don't need to be tier 2 to shine in conquest and characters that do need to be tier two to shine in Conquest. So I'm first gonna cover the characters that I think are good but do absolutely need their tier two, and then we'll jump into the tier one or tier two more um, you know, variable list. So the, the characters that need their tier two to really shine in Conquest from this new list is a bit short. It's only four characters long, but it is an important four characters. We've talked already about Hulk and Red Hulk, but we haven't talked a lot about Cho, Having him at tier two now, I can say that he does get a lot tankier with his tier two passive. The increased guaranteed dodge, the increased dodge ignore, as well as the bonus damage and skill damage make him a threat both offensively and defensively. You still need his uniform, whether he's tier one or tier two, but with that tier two jump, his defense is really skyrocket. You can see almost 8,000 energy defense and over 10,000 physical defense. If you slap an all defense, obelisk on him with some max HP, you give him something like binary power for an ISO set, he becomes a monster to deal with in Conquest, especially if he triggers his fifth skill. Good luck dealing with that, uh, you know, raging green train. The next one on the list is one that I'm surprised I didn't cover in the last video, because in the last video I covered the newly um, recommended and the newly rebalanced Captain America, and I didn't cover Black Widow, but holy cowboys, she is such a nuisance now in Alliance Conquest after her updates. She's kind of like Squirrel Girl. She just goes through all of her iframes and your characters just stand there doing nothing. I've seen it on both sides. I've had my Black Widow dominate and I've seen my characters dominated by a Black Widow who would only do her fifth skill, second skill, and third skill. And it was just constantly iframe hell and you're just basically waiting for the clock to run out and the timer to run out. The reason why I recommend her to be tier two is that even though those iframe skills are there at tier one, that guaranteed dodge is gonna allow her to start up her iframes at the beginning of the fight. At the beginning when all the characters run into the center of the arena, it can be a little bit dicey and you can get one-shotted if you don't have an invincibility obelisk, some guaranteed dodge, or some other way of just naturally defending yourself from that initial first hit. So that's why I do think she does need the guaranteed dodge. The lightning damage doesn't, uh, you know, isn't bad. It does help her her DPS, but that's really the reason why I think her tier two is important to cementing her status as a solid Alliance Conquest character. The third one on the list, I don't have any personal experience handling, but I have been handled twice now by a tier two singularity, and it's no joke, boys. Way back in the day, her third skill, Supernova, was the original Vortex of Nightmares. This was the blueprint for Sharon Rogers' new fifth skill and Magneto's new second skill. This thing still sucks you in, and it still sucks to get hit by it. In addition, with her tier two motorcycle passive, 40% guaranteed dodge is a headache to deal with, especially if you forget that she has that and you don't put in ignore defense characters against her. She'll just dodge all your attacks and kill you probably slowly because she doesn't do that much damage. But in addition, she has partial iframes on her fourth and I believe on her second skills and she does have an iframe as well and some decent damage on dimensional tear. She is not to be taken lightly. Definitely a bigger threat than Sister Grimm and I think a bigger threat than She-Hulk too aside from that leadership. The last character that I think needs to be tier two to really shine on this list is one that I wish I had a more particular 
highlight for you guys, and it's Sin. And I know you're going to call me crazy, but there was a highlight, and the stream bros will remember this, where my Sin took down a partially weakened Doctor Strange. I know it sounds crazy, but my Tier 1 Sin beelined directly to Doctor Strange, and because of her 4-star passive, Fatal Reversal, and I've talked about this before, she was immune to Doctor Strange's debuff, his freeze time. And when he hit her with the freeze time, because she was the leader, she got an, an increased buff, and then she killed him. And I'll show you another highlight where the exact same thing happens against a Tier 1 Storm. So yeah, Sin was supposed to take out Storm, and she did. Perfect. Do you see how Sin just darted straight for uh, Storm? That was the plan. So if we zoom in a little bit closer onto that uh, attack, you can see there that as, right as Sin gets to Storm, Storm hits her with the second skill. Now normally, that would have caused a guard break effect to happen for Sin, but because of Fatal Reversal, she removed the debuff, and you could see at the top corner, um, next to her portrait, she had that yellow and red uh, squares. The red one was for the all attack, all speed crit rate buff, and then the yellow one with the feather is the same debuff icon that you see for characters like Wasp with her tier 2 passive. And that was preventing further debuff shenanigans from Storm. So I put Sin on that team specifically to deal with Storm. She has the type advantage being speed. And she will not be controlled by the, by the elements, by the Eye of Agamotto. And that's why... You know, Sin's a badass. Obviously, she needs to be tier 2 to have any chance of dealing with a full HP character or other tier 2 characters. Obviously, she would need a lot other help, like a defensive ISO 8 set, a defensive obelisk. That goes without saying. But simply put, it's hard to ignore the success, although in a limited run, that I've had with this 4-star passive. So you shouldn't take it lightly. If you do see a tier 2 Sin out in the wild, be careful. The rest of this list does not need to be tier 2 necessarily to succeed. However, I do have a lot of these characters already at tier 2 because they're strong. They'll just do these things better when they are tier 2. So the first one is Mantis. And I didn't talk about Mantis in the last video, but I think a lot of you guys already know how menacing she can be in PvP situations. And Alliance Conquest is no different. That fear circle that she summons with her fifth skill, the iframes on her other skills, the heal that she has basically up constantly just makes her a headache even at tier 1. At tier 2 she does get some crit damage and some ignored defense, but it really doesn't help out with that crown control or that heal. So she has all of the tools that she needs at tier 1 to just make your life a nightmare if you don't have debuff characters to take her down, like potentially Sin, who we just talked about. But yeah, Mantis is amazing. Another one that's amazing, newer character, couldn't have talked about it in the last video, Magneto. Wow, it is really hard to go up against a tier 2 Magneto without using other uh, uh, mutants because of his tier 2 passive Master of Magnetism. Now, of course, he doesn't need to be tier 2, but if he is tier 2, there's a huge threat because of that extra damage to humans. And that means you can only use aliens in humans or other... Uh, X-Men, you know, mutant types against him. But even at tier 1, the extra binds that he has on the iframes make him incredibly hard to hit. The 4th skill gives him that shield, and then that continuous damage from the 5th skill, which often hits two characters at once, because I find in Conquest, characters really like to bunch up and get really close. So Magnetism Maelstorm really punishes that. And then that 45% usually means that you're fighting off multiple uh, mutants, which makes it even more difficult. He is honestly a huge headache for me in Conquest, so I had to include him on this list. The next one, I also have Tier 2, but she does the same uh, effects at Tier 1. I know I didn't show her in a positive light in the previous clip, but Storm is basically Crystal in Conquest. She crowd controls so well, so aggressively, she locks teams down. I've killed Tier 2 teams who didn't have a debuff protection, just with Storm and the right defenses around her because she just goes berserk. And once she starts up those storms, they just don't stop. She just keeps spamming whirlwinds and hurricanes and the enemies just sit there getting insta-gibbed, bouncing around, doing basically nothing until they die. Storm is legit a solid pick for Conquest. Another character that I've had some limited success with but I can see and I can extrapolate based on that is Spider-Gwen. Now yes, at tier 1 her damage will be extremely low. 
So you do need to factor that in. Uh, her tier two does give her a damage bump. But the thing with Spider Gwen is that her her skills, much like Squirrel Girls, have lots of iframes. So I've watched my Spider Gwen and I've watched enemy Spider Gwens just cycle through iframes continuously and barely ever get hit. In addition, of course, she has the webbing, so she has that CC potential, and she really has a super flexible um, skill rotation because you you know most of her skills give her partial iframes at some point, so you can just rotate through whatever uh, works as the AI is choosing it, and she can you know, slowly dismantle uh, an enemy team. The next one on the list uh, goes hand in hand with Wiccan from the last video, and that's Songbird. She does get some extra CC from her tier two passive, but she really doesn't need it because of the fact that she usually opens with either her second skill in Conquest or her third skill. Either one of those is great. I would probably say the second skill is uh, better, but I've seen my team get snared constantly by enemy songbirds and it frustrates the hell out of me so you could think of building a team that has two heavy hitters two tier two monsters and then just sneak songbird in as that third and they might not realize that she's there and if you don't have another cc threat like dr strange they might not prepare a debuff team and then she could catch them by surprise you can also use songbird in a defensive way to protect some of your other teammates because she controls the other team and stops them from attacking you could try combining her with weaker characters that need a lot of help like carnage who doesn't prioritize his fifth skill or elsa or black bolt who also don't prioritize their fifth skills but because of her defensive properties for your team she's a solid pick for conquest the next one i have at tier two is kind of hit and miss. Thank you for the Dimension Rift. Kid Kaiju. I hesitated to put him on this list, but I think he deserves mention here because a lot of his skills will guard break, will kind of perma stun you and leave you kind of bouncing around. And of course, with Hyvo, you're basically fighting four against three. And because he has that extra sketch up that applies to all allies, if he pulls it off, it's going to mean that almost 90% chance you're going to win that round unless you're against the monsters of the game like Jean Grey or Doctor Strange because everyone on your team just got a huge attack, dodge, and guard buff. However, I have seen both the highs and the lows of Kid Kaiju. I've seen a Kid Kaiju completely wreck my tier 2 team and I'm left in shambles screaming into my microphone. I've also seen my Kid Kaiju die in one second to Odin's fourth skill. It really goes both ways, so I hesitate to put him on this list, but I want you to tread with caution. He can be both a hero and a zero to your conquest team. The last two that I want to point out are ones that may surprise you, but once you understand what it is about them, you can see their potential in conquest, and I am tempted even to tier two one or two of these characters because of the uh, potential that they have. And I'm talking more specifically about both Maximus and Moon Girl. Much like Kid Kaiju, they come preset with summons. In Maximus's case, he funnels out a bunch more summons once he gets going. In Moon Girl's case, Devil Dinosaur actually provides a lot of protection. He gets in between you and the enemy and he just slaps them around. He's a huge meat bag and he takes those hits, Moon Girl is protected despite her being super fragile and she can start to get her CC moves off, her silence, her bind, and she can really become a super headache even at tier one. So if you, you're running low on teams, but you see an opening for someone like Moon Girl or someone like Maximus, I implore you, try them out. You might be, not gonna spend crystals, you might be pleasantly surprised by their output, especially Maximus with that uh, Paralyze it works and it can be uh, very amazing when it does. So let me know what you guys think of this new updated list uh, for additional characters for Alliance Conquest. Let me know what other underdogs you might have found. We're nearing about 50 characters already, so we're running out of you know surprise characters, surprise picks to choose from, but there may still be a few left, so I'm hoping you guys can shed some light on the last few that I'm missing from this list. Obviously, the ones that are already great that we know of, like Doctor Strange, we don't need to talk about them. But that's all, guys. And so, of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.